my dad used to come home with completely random NES games all the time. I lived in this really lucky period when I was a kid where, like, the GameCube was a new thing. You know, I was just coming off of N64, so, like, NES was kind of old then, but it wasn't, like, so old that, that it was retro and people cared about it again. No, in 2002, it was just that old clunky thing that everybody was getting rid of, so you could find NES games at pawn shops for dirt cheap. So, you know, sometimes after my dad would pick me up from swimming lessons, we'd grab some pepperoni, we'd swing by a pawn shop or two, and, and hey, look at that, there's an NES game and it's $5, why not? We can put it in the old Nintendo when we get home. So even though I was definitely a, uh, GameCube kid, I still got to grow up with everything from Wizards and Warriors to Skate or Die. I was out here using Game Genie, getting infinite lives and Turtles 2, and when I played Mario 3, I always had the P-Wing. I was living in that perfect little world where I'd just be sitting there playing Wind Waker or something, and Dad would come busting in with a completely random NES game. Why? Well, it was five bucks at Buddy Bingo's buy and sell, and I was on my way home to get your sister from piano lesson, so I figured, hey, why not? Here you go, James. This is your whole week now. The Adams Family. Oh man, my family used to love the Adams Family. Uh, sometimes I would catch one of the older cartoons on uh, Teletoon around the Halloween season, but we all loved watching that later live action series. I think it was the new Adams Family. You got a big old family of ghouls, just iconic characters all around. You got Gomez, Morticia, Lurch, you rang a thing, the little hand, and of course, Uncle Fester. I remember he'd stick a light bulb in his mouth and be all like, I don't know, he was some cracked out shit. I don't know what he was doing. There's been a bunch of iterations of the series over the decades, and they even still make Adam's Family stuff today, so I feel like it's something that most people are probably still aware of. And obviously, being a long standing piece of popular media like that, you really can't pull through the 80s or 90s without having a bunch of video games. Most of these were based on the 1991 film. Uh, there's one for Genesis and Super Nintendo, which was the side scroller where you played as Gomez and uh, the TurboGrafx CD had one, weirdly enough. Pretty similar, but you have this umbrella you can use as a weapon, and there was even voice acting. Here I am again, just like Clockwork. And I had the NES version of it. Now, this was actually one of three Adams Family games for the NES, the other two being Pugsley Scavenger Hunt, which I only know about because for some reason they made the cover of Nintendo Power one time, and of course, the other one is the far more infamous Fester's Quest. Die! Die! Jesus! God, I remember watching so much ABGN as a teenager, and I would always wish that he would cover this one too, because it was impossible! I could never see the end of it! But I had to. And I tried my darndest to beat it, right? Like, year after year I would come back to it just to get my butt kicked. But that never happened, so too bad. You're not getting James Rolfe, you're getting James me. <laughs> but uh, I, I really want to take you guys through the entire experience, right? I want to finally beat this thing and show you the entire game. So let's do it. on the cartridge just a bit. If you want it to work, you gotta wiggle it. Now bear with me as I don't have the equipment to make NES footage look all nice and clean like I do with my other consoles, so uh, we're gonna have to go with that old composite squiggly look for this one. Hey, Ocean made this game. Okay, now that was a pretty common name back then. You would see a lot of licensed games from these guys. A lot of NES, Super Nintendo, a lot of early PC stuff like DOS and Amiga. The Super not around anymore, they kind of fizzled out in the late 90s, but man, these guys used to be everywhere. Anyway, the logos, and first thing we see after that is Gomez walking up to the mansion, all Castlevania-like. I actually gotta give him credit, this is pretty cool, you know, they got the lightning going, the bit crush sound of the thunder, the, um... Hello? Is it? Uh, I guess it just lingers here until you hit the button. There we go. Uh, you, oh. Hint! One of the gravestones leads to a crypt. Stand on the gravestone and press B on control pad to enter. Alright, got it. So it's a, it's a pretty basic side-scroller where you play as Gomez. You can duck, 
<laughs> and you can jump and that's it. That's all you can do. No attacks, no uh, B button actions or nothing, just the jump and duck. So likewise, you'll deal with enemies Mario style by jumping on top and with projectiles by ducking underneath. Just don't land on them when they're biting. So there's not really any cutscene explaining this. Uh, it was probably in the manual, which I don't have anymore, but basically the point of the game here is to rescue all of your family members. They've all been kidnapped and it's up to Gomez to rescue them all. To do that, you'll explore the Adams Mansion, taking a peek in all the rooms, combing the map for any items you can use, and of course, tracking down each and every member of the Adams family. As an onslaught of completely random characters and creatures dedicate their entire day to ending your life? Like seriously, who is this guy throwing shit at us out of the window? Th that's our window! That's our house! Who is he? Could you imagine you walk by your own home and somebody you don't recognize is throwing shit at you from your own bedroom window? Like, I would call the police! Maybe it's supposed to be Uncle Fester, I don't know. It's are those light bulbs he's throwing at us? Either way, it's really difficult to dodge. Okay, it's really easy once you know what to do. You have to run right under the window and duck. Anyway, we get to the mansion and the front door is locked, so we'll have to first walk past it to that graveyard they mentioned. Oh, I love these happy little cartoon ghosts. Why did every NES game have enemies that look like this? Like, every time there's ghosts or ghouls, it seemed like the reference point was like an October Walmart flyer. Cartoon skulls, too. Oh shit, they fall if you land on them. Okay, we make it to the crypt and uh, we got this little skeleton guy walking back and forth and... This is, uh, this is why I never play NES games on the NES. Oh my god, what happened? It's still all glitched up! One of... Deheb... Gubafagdonic... What? What is this? None of this is words! Something's not connected to something right or something like that. It's not the first time this has happened to me, though. Uh, always really funny to me how you can actually still play the entire game while it looks like this. Like, the game still plays fine, it's just the graphics that are buggered up. In fact, one time I actually beat the entirety of Mario 3 looking like this on an NES once. I even got to see some uh, little bits and pieces of some sprites that were completely unused in the final game. Yeah, I guess the OG ROM hackers are out here back in the 80s, you just bump the cartridge, you get a whole new experience. But enough fun and around, let's get back to it. Back to the crypt. Okay, we got many doors, many doors. Which door do we try? Let's try this guy. Oh, what? Come on, a beginner's trap, you dickhead. Fuck. Okay, let's try this one. Bones. Oh, oh that really drains the hell out of your health. Jeez. Okay, see, so yeah, I just gotta kind of finagle my way through here, duck under there. Okay, yeah, yeah, the controls aren't really that bad. They're pretty tight. There's no momentum, so it's, like, comparable to Mega Man or, uh, or Hollow Knight if you want something newer. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty good at those games, so I guess it's just a matter of, like, adjusting to the jank. And, uh, yeah, that collision is, is kind of fluffy. It's not so great. Hitting the corners on platforms and games like this will often have you kind of clipping into it a little bit. What I like to do is I really like to play with the hitboxes, figure out what's really considered where, how far off a platform can I walk before it considers me falling. I just kind of bump into stuff until I get a feel for it. Wait, it's just money at the top. Well, as far as I can tell, it just adds to your score, so I don't really care about that. I guess we're dropping all the way down. Uh, let's try this door. It's the same room, just a different color, but everything is identical. Same platform, same... same thing at the top. Still nothing important. Great, I, I guess I picked the right one last. At least we can... Wait, a bone? Well, what good are you to me? What am I gonna, like, pick the lock with the bone? Do, do I pick the lock with the... No, I didn't think so. Okay, so here's what you do. You see that skeleton in the middle, right? You gotta jump on him three times. Now, not consecutively, mind you, because if you bounce on him twice in a row, for some reason, you fall through him and start taking damage, so don't do that. Jump on him three times, carefully, individually, and then we finally get that mansion key. All right, now we can finally get this game go- What? Well, how did you- how could you possibly expect me to react to that? Are you kidding me? And you can get used to it too. This game is full of cheap traps just like this. Half of these rooms hit you with something that you couldn't possibly avoid the second you come in, the frame you come in. I'm not even exaggerating. Why is all this crap even falling apart anyway? Like, I thought you guys are rich and you can't even afford a handyman to fix your shitty house. So we start exploring the mansion carefully. Uh, this game is actually somewhat non-linear. It's kind of like a Metroid game. You're free to explore the mansion in any order you want, though a lot of doors will be locked 
and many rooms do require certain items, so you're basically wandering around the house until you can start piecing things together. The entire thing is a friggin' death trap, though. Like, your first instinct is probably to go here, the door right in front of you, which brings us to the kitchen. But the second you get in here, you got knives and forks and, and mice all flying at you trying to murder you to death. Like, get me out of here. Okay, let's try going up this way. The, uh, the landing. You got these knights swinging at you, also pretty easy to get by. And then, wait, is that thing up there? Oh, we can jump up here, bounce off the bed. Yo, yo it is thing. Dope, we've rescued our first family member. Awesome. When this happens, they'll get added to your little pause menu there, showing you all the items and the uh, characters you've rescued so far. And uh, while most of the family members don't actually do anything, you can use thing as an invincibility shield. Press that select button. Yeah, this is back when you use select just to do like an action. <laughs> Press that button and thing will then circle around you, protecting you from all damage for a short amount of time. You can do this three Three times and three times only. You never get any more, you get thing, you get three, and that's all you get for the whole game. So, you kind of have to find like the three perfect times to use it. Well, let's check over here before we double back and oh my god, it's raining money. And spiders. Moving on, let's try down here. We got the dining room. We have this little green goblin guy here, but he's pretty easy to take out with that chandelier up there. It's pretty fun dropping that on the little dummy. Uh, then we got these mutant plants spitting acid at us in the next room. Like, look at this. You got all these projectiles everywhere. Who who put these here? Like, why is this umbrella so important that these things have to be protecting it? Either way, it's mine now. Huh? Let's try going this way into the main hallway. This is where things really start getting annoying. I mean, you got this room right here. The toy room. You got this evil little teddy bear trying to kill yeah, but but there's a snorkel up there. I want to get that snorkel. So you try to get up and, and for some reason you keep falling off the blocks. You keep slipping and falling down and when you slip and fall down this bear comes over and drains your entire health bar in the in the time it takes you to get back up. It's it's absolute crap. Yeah, let's try a different room. We got Fester's room. Uh, not much in here, but spiders. All right. Uh, we got the next one. Wednesday's room. Yeah, <laughs> she would have killer dolls in here trying to murder you. I mean, she tortures her brother for fun. What do you expect? Yeah, let's try to worm around these guys and get that key. Wooden key. It's probably that wooden tree door at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, that's to the tree. Uh, we'll try that later. For now, we'll go to the next room. Oh, speak of the devil. It's Pugsley's room. Yo, you got that piranha fish tank thing going. That's really sick, actually. That's really Really seem to be a whole lot in here. Let's see, uh, see where this goes. It's Pugsley, and he and looks like he's Stockley. Ah, oh, wow. Wow, I didn't even notice those legs sticking out of the window earlier. How did I not notice that? Oh, right, how could I forget? I was too busy playing Dodge the Killer Baseballs. Anyway, uh, in order to rescue Pugsley, we have to first find the three ingredients for a shrinking potion so we can get him unstuck. We already have one, the bone. Why don't we see if there's any in that tree we have a key to? Oh, it's Spike City in here. They don't kill you in one hit like Mega Man, thankfully, but they will drain your health like a toilet. Do a little climbing, do a little bit of bat dodging, and, you know, deal with a couple of cheap falling platforms that you have no way of telling they're gonna fall, but it's nothing I can't get through without too much trouble. It's not too, too hard. And, and hey, at the top, a big blue egg. Let's grab that, check the inventory. Yeah, that's two down, one to go. Okay, so when I was a kid, I know for a fact this was the closest I ever came to completing that potion. I never, ever saw whatever that third ingredient was. And hopefully if everything goes right, I'm gonna be seeing it for the very first time today. Well, we'll double back to the hall because there's two doors we didn't check. Let's try this one. Attic. It's locked. Okay, well that leaves the bathroom. Oh, I remember the bathroom! This was one of the first rooms I would always tackle as a kid just because I knew it's one of the only rooms in the entire game that can't kill you. No, instead you got these like haunted soap sliding around. They just make you slip and fall down, which is nice that you don't have to lose any lives, but God, it, it's still hard as piss to even get up there. And what did I even do that for? What did I do? I just turned the shower on. I don't even know what good that does me. I don't even remember what you're supposed to do here. Well, go somewhere else, I guess. We got the main ballroom. This is a pretty cool room. You can climb up and down the curtains. You got these dragon head statue things spitting fire at you. You got these two weirdos. Can I, can I talk to them? Is that... No, you die. Well, moving on. We haven't gone this way yet. That door's locked. I don't think I've ever been through that door as a kid. Maybe we'll see what's behind it, but for now we'll go into the main hallway. Look at all the portraits! And that is so cool, seeing all of these 8-bit artworks of the characters. This was one of my favorite parts as a kid, just getting to see- There's a killer polar bear. 
It mauled me to death in seconds. How am I supposed to deal with that? How do you, like, he kills me. He just killed, look how fast he drained your health. I really hate that there's no iframes in this game. You never get like blinking and invincible after taking damage. That only happens after you die and respawn, which is kind of useless. No, taking damage is just a constant health drainer. As long as you're making contact, that meter is plummeting. And why does it sound like a whistly choo-choo train? <laughs> Either way, you really can't mess around here. Health pickups are incredibly scarce. There's like, I think there's only three pieces of cheese in the entire game. And yeah, cheese is the health. I don't know if that was something Gomez liked in the show or not. I don't remember. Maybe, maybe he's just a little mouse. Well, back to the hallway of Polar Bear Malarkey. You can jump on his head. That only stuns him for a second, though. You have to keep up this little pattern here and pretty much keep that up until you get to the end of the hall. Alternatively, you can trigger this bear trap if you bounce off his head and get it, and then you get him to walk over it, and he's stuck. Kind of hard to do without taking damage, but it's worth it because then the polar bear can no longer hurt you anytime you come back here. You can also jump up this way and trigger it up here, which is a lot safer, but it takes longer to do, so I kind of like just jumping on his head to save time. Dodge all the swords here in the next room, very cheaply placed, but at least it's easy to memorize, I guess. Hey, the library. Uh, there's a cord. We can summon Lurch. You rang? Ooh, I did rang. If you give Lurch one of those three music scripts you found, he'll leave the room, go to play it, and before long, we'll start to hear a song playing. If the song you chose was long enough, then you'll have enough time to make your way back to the ballroom where, ooh, those little goblin guys looks like they're dancing right out of the way. If you pick one that's too short, though, you'll probably just enter the room to him leaving. Wow, thanks, Lurch. So, we go beyond that door and hey, we're in the woods. There's goblins, killer birds dropping rocks on ya, and apples. Apples flying off the trees at speeds high enough to break bones, I guess. <laughs> Is this where I want to be the guy who got this idea? I didn't find it too hard getting through this screen without getting hit too much. I think all those years of playing Hollow Knight and Mega Man are really starting to pay off. The way this game controls is like really similar. A lot of weaving back and forth. Ooh, that's the good stuff. Looks like a dead end though. Hey, I'm willing to bet you jump in there. Oh my god, my health. I'm, dr I'm drowning. Okay, I think we definitely need that snorkel, so let's go back here and, uh, okay. It turns out you just can't be standing on the boxes when they're frowning. You gotta jump on them when they're smiling, so you gotta time the jumps and get through it. It's easy enough once you know what you're doing, I guess, but I still fall off at the end and end up losing a life. But we got the snorkel, so now it is time to suffer through an awful NES water level. Good freaking lord, this is terrible. Feels like I'm dragging a giant boulder behind me. It feels like I'm swimming through molasses. Why is this so heavy and slow? And like, ma just mashing the button doesn't really seem to, to work that well. You have to like mash it a bit slower, like like consistent rhythm or something. I don't know, it feels terrible. God, if you want to get anywhere, you really have to accelerate yourself, but the movement is so sluggish. It's like good luck trying not to swim into anything. And, and what's with all the killer seaweed, man? What's with the killer seaweed, man? This is so many S Ninja Turtles crap. Yeah, I grew up with this one too, buddy. And uh, yeah, that level, that was the furthest I ever saw of that thing. And likewise here, I could never get past this screen, not once. Whatever's at the end of this, it's gonna be news to me. I swear this control's even worse than Ninja Turtles, dude. I can barely get myself moving fast enough to even dodge half of these things. I just end up taking damage most of the time. But with a little bit of elbow grease, I barely get through it and it was all worth it because we got a wrench, a wrench, baby. Now we can fix something. Wait, do I have to swim back? Can I just die? No, you have to swim back. Well, there's a secret room full of money here. Still don't care about the score, but hey, that's, uh, that's neat, I guess. One excruciating swim later, and I end up back in the main hall. Oh no. There's only one way left to go. Back in the kitchen. I was terrified of that door when I was a kid. Like, it only takes two seconds of being in there to realize how freaking hostile an environment it is. No, seven-year-old me ran back to the bathroom where the soap couldn't hurt him, but I guess it is that part of the game. We do have to do this now, so uh, I can probably do it. I just gotta focus. 
right, right away. Get out of here. You're gone. Oh, and a knife. You can't do sh- Oh, the stair- Get off the stairs! A frying pan, knife, fork! So far, so good. So far, so good. Oh, wait. A bucket. How do I- How do I get up there? How do I get that? How do- Stop! How do I get up there? How do I- Can't- What? I can't land- I can't land on that. Can I- Oh, I can- I can climb the pipe! I can climb the pipe! I gotta- Oh, okay. I got the bike. Got the- Yes, got the bucket! Got the bike! Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. This isn't really nearly as hard as I remember, actually. I don't even know what to do with this bucket. Oh, I bet you bring it to the shower. Yeah, now we got a full bucket. Whatever that's for. Okay, well, back to Hell's Kitchen, I guess. There's two more rooms we can get to from here, one of which is more obvious than the other, but, you know, that's what the little hint's for. Let's go in the furnace. Just like the tree in the crypt, this one here is a much more traditional platforming stage. You got gaps, bottomless pits, and all sorts of obstacles. You're gonna be dodging drip drops of lava, big blasts of fire, it's not the most difficult thing in the world. It was when I was a kid, but now I find it pretty breezy. And, uh, oh, we got Grandma! If you find my wrench, I'll be able to repair the fog machine. Good stuff. Now we know what that's for. Now, for the other room. Yep, here we are. One of the worst parts of the whole game. At least from what I remember. The freezer. So firstly, look how slippery this is. It doesn't even matter if you're in the air. The sliding is, it's just like applied strictly to the x-axis. That has nothing to do with whether or not you're even touching the ice. It's so weird. But all we can do is make do with it, I suppose. Okay, I can get a feel for this. Yeah, lots of throttling, tapping back and forth, treating my airtime identically to my ground time. Nobody should ever have to play a game like this, but I think I got the hang of it. All right, slide under the penguins, jump up into these cubbies to dodge those snowballs. You know, very normal things to be doing in your freezer. The collision on these parts is really weird. Oh, you're gonna throw one of these at me? You're gonna make me time a jump with these controls? Okay, I got this. That's all you have to do. One, two, three, four. Got it. Four. One, two, three, four. Bingo. And hey, there's Wednesday. Wednesday Adams. What's up, girl? Jesus, you look frostbitten from frick to dick. Thank you for releasing me, father, but I cannot help you until I am thawed out. Okay, well, probably gotta bring her to the furnace then. We can just... <laughs> okay, sure, fine. We'll probably just get... Oh, no, <laughs> when you get Wednesday, they checkpoint you here. I don't just spawn back at... No, you have to walk all the way back yourself. And the worst part is, this one stupid jump right here alone makes a trip back much harder. Look at this, like how precise do I have to be? I wasted all of my lives and even to continue here. By the time I got out, I had no lives left and I was one hit away from dying. I barely escaped with my life. I get... Okay, that was objectively pretty funny, but we do have to start over again, so, uh... I guess since the freezer's clearly the hardest part of the game we found so far, we ought to tackle that first, huh? If you lose too many lives on this screen, your run is pretty much just done. I mean, there's hardly any extra lives in the entire game, and once you go through your only two continues, that's it. Game over, back to the title screen, do the entire game from scratch. No saving, no passwords, no nothing. You just have to do it all in one go. Don't die too many times, don't take too much damage, and that's just what it takes. So I do that all frickin' over, get Wednesday, bring her to the furnace, and hey, she gives us the key to the attic. What's with Wednesday hoarding all the keys? All right, finally, we can see what the attic looks like. Uh, okay, this is not too bad. We got bats and rats, but neither of them are all that difficult to avoid. The bats have a really predictable pattern. If they even wake up, that is. Uh, it's just a pretty decent screen with some dropping down, jumping up, and uh, before long, we're here. Oh my god. This is the part, this is the screen, this is the furthest I would ever get in this game as a kid. And if I couldn't get here by non-linear means, I probably never would have seen it, but either way, this was the screen I never could complete once. The freezer, I beat it a handful of times. The furnace, I beat it a handful of times, but this, I never saw what was at the end of the screen. No matter how many times I played this, this was the reason the game would always defeat me. You wanna see why? Yeah, 
That would be why. Uh, if any of those bricks touch you and they fall, it doesn't just deal damage like every other thing in this game would. No, no, that's way too forgiving. We're gonna knock you clean off the roof entirely. Get down, start over. Yeah, not only do you have to start that screen over, but you have to go back in the house, back in the hall, walk all the way through, dodge the knights again, get all the way through the stupid attic again, and now you get another attempt. Okay, round two, let's go. Hey, dodged you this time. Okay, now it's just a matter of whenever the next one's gonna come down and do that. So, uh, you can see why I never beat this game now. Like, getting through all of those really difficult rooms without losing all of your lives, that's one thing, right? But getting to the end of this roof without getting hit once? That is patience testing on a whole another level. There's no time to react. The only way you could ever realistically dodge any of this is if you're chaotically rocking the D-pad back and forth to slowly inch your way through bit by bit. Because otherwise, there's no way you could ever react to that. And there's a bunch of them, too. Well, now you know why I've been saving Thing the entire game. Like, sure, I could have dodged some of that underwater stuff, but hey, I can get through there without it, even if I am in rough shape by the end of it. And same for the furnace, same for the kitchen. These things I can get good at. These things I can handle. But this? This? Do you want to be doing this? Is this fun to you? No, we're spending the invincibility, and boy do we need it. On top of the bricks, you also got more birds dropping rocks on you too. At least these don't knock you off like the bricks do, but I still don't want to die. But thankfully using Thing, it's not that hard at all. If only Kid Me could have had Thing here, I would always end up using it on an earlier screen. We finally get to the end, and it's the fog machine. I got fog. Well, thank God I repaired the Thing before coming up here. If you don't get Grandma and the wrench before this, Total waste of time. And power-ups, too, if you use them. <laughs> hey, 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 that's all three ingredients. We're going to get Pugsley now. Oh, but not before sliding down the chimney. Ooh, we get to float down with the umbrella, grab us some extra money, and even an extra life. Or not. If you made it here without getting the umbrella, which, uh, yes, I had to do all of this again just to test it, uh, you just fall down. You can't even grab anything. But if you think that's bad, well, I'd be surprised if you even got there without the umbrella, because if you get hit by one of these bricks without the umbrella, umbrella, you don't just fall off the roof, you fall off the roof and DIE! So you really have to grab that thing right away. God, like the amount of ways you can screw yourself over in this game, God. Anyway, we come out to this fireplace here and now it's time to give Pugsley that potion. We are in no man's land now. I've never seen this far into the game ever. And mind you, this is at least 20 years later for me. I'm pretty freaking excited about this. I've always wanted to see what's on the other side of all this, and I'm sure it's probably gonna be some crappy black screen with a bunch of misspelled congratulations text, but I'm this close. I gotta see it myself. I can't look it up. I gotta see this through to the end. All right, Bugsley, let's get you out of there. Thanks, Dad. If you keep me safe, I'm small enough to climb through a butthole. I'm, I was trying to do a Bobby Hill voice. I don't know what that was. Okay, oh, wait. Unlock a door. Dude! It's the locked door in the hall! I've never seen what's behind that door! I've never seen what's behind this? I think I'm never gonna see what's behind this. Why am I- why is it not working? Well, however you open this door, it doesn't seem like Pugsley's the answer. But obviously there's some door I have to use Pugsley on, so, you know, I backtracked through almost every room in the game, and I- I could not find anything! I was running in circles for probably half an hour. Okay, so, I had to look it up, you know, NES games, right? What you have to do is so freaking cryptic that I, I really don't think I ever would have found this out myself. You have to return to the music room, or the library, or whatever, the room with the music sheets. Grab this one here, give this one to Lurch, and then stay in the room until the music starts, and a secret passage then opens. As far as I know, there are no clues or hints or anything even insinuating that you can do this. I guess you have to just kind of figure it out by yourself by dicking around in that room and seeing what all the songs sound like, but I don't know. Maybe there is some way of finding it out. If you know, let me know, but either way, I don't think I ever would have found that. Oh, uh, I don't trust this. How much you want to bet that like one of these goes where I want to go and the rest are just a waste of time or kill you or something? Oh my god. Yeah, I saw that coming. A mile away. Well, let's try this one. Oh. 
Oh, oh, great, I guess I'm walking all the way back. Okay, so this one kills you. These ones just warp you to a random part of the mansion to make you walk all the way back. This one here is where we want to go. Whoa, this next screen I've never seen before, ever. A riverboat. Yeah, you pump the B button to accelerate. A little wonky, but it's not as bad as the swimming, thankfully. We got locked as monsters trying to kill you and stalactites falling on us. Screw it, I'm using that last thing shield. Speed on through. And there's the door Pugsley opens. Whoa, this has got to be like a big vault or something. Way in. Oh, the door. Oh, we... Wait, I don't... What? I don't... I don't have enough money? I... Wait, I can't... No, I can't go through. I need that. That's how much I need. Six zeros. That's a million dollars. I can't beat the game because I didn't pick up a million dollars? 613,000 isn't enough, apparently. No, you have to pick up every single dollar you see in this game. It's not just a high score thing. It's a beat the game to begin with thing. Probably backtrack. I wouldn't know what rooms had money and which. And all the lives I don't have anymore, and I would have to freeze her again. And... This is NES games. This is this is NES games. You drag your ass through the flames of hell, and just when you think you see the shining light at the end, back to start. You sick of that music yet? No, yeah, there's literally only two songs in the whole game. The Crypt theme, and then this one. Okay, real deal baseball time now. Grab the dollars, dodge the baseball, slam into the Crypt, do all three rooms, get the bone, get the money, beat the skeleton, get the key, dodge the baseballs, dodge the chandelier, get thing, get as much of the raining money as you possibly can, get the snorkel, dodge the knives, back to the fridge, pick up Wednesday, get the money, head on back, dodge the forks, back to the furnace, pick up grandma, get the money, get back, past the bear, get the money, get the money, get the money, get the money, dodge the swords, ring, lurch, get the music, head through the door, get through the woods. No! What am I supposed to do here? I can't get past this jump. There's money over there. Uh, presumably I need it, but no matter how many times I keep falling in, I can't make this. And you can't just use the parasol whenever you want either. It only happens automatically. So how do you get over there? I don't understand. Did that frog just land on the water? That frog just landed on the water. Could I, could I maybe bait him further out that way? <laughs> oh my God. If that's not a brain blast, I don't know what is. Holy crap. You gotta give me credit for that one. That was that was pretty sick. I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty proud of myself for that one. That was awesome. Now I have to swim. Mash the button, get through water, don't get damaged, get the money, dodge a seaweed, get the wrench, then swim back, back to the woods, through the attic, to the roof, then use thing bulletproof. Down the chimney, get the money, make the potion, then free pugs, a secret door over the boat, at the vault. Then you choke. What is this? It's still not enough? I swear I got every single bag of money, every dollar bill, every freaking penny I saw in the entire game. I went to every screen, did I not? What, what am I missing? I'll tell you what we're missing. We're missing all of the secret rooms. Yeah, the secret rooms. How can I forget the secret rooms? There are four hidden rooms in the mansion. I found one just at the end of the swimming part. Pretty obvious, pretty easy to find, but the other three are much more tucked away. Firstly, we have this one behind the fireplace. Yeah, that's what the bucket of water's for. You douse the flames and you got a secret room. Now that one's pretty cool, but the second one is up in the attic here. Not really as obvious or really looks like that you can get in there. You, you just kind of have to be mashing buttons and get lucky there. However, there's a problem with these two rooms. They only have bills, which are only worth 500 points each. Add them all up and that's only 5,000 more on the score. Not nearly enough to make a meaningful difference at all. The same goes for the raining money too, actually. It gives you so little that you don't actually have to do it. So yeah, the bucket and the water from the bathroom. Neither of which matter at all. You do not need to get either if you just want to beat the game. They only contribute to a higher score. Which the battery in this cartridge has been dead for 50 years, so I couldn't even care about that if I wanted to. What actually matters here are the two rooms with the money bags. Now these guys are worth 10 grand each, making these rooms worth $100,000. Now that makes a big difference. That's exactly how much I need too, so let's find that last hidden room. 
you would never find this on your own. You see this blank painting here? Jump into it and press up on the D-pad to enter. Now that's hidden away enough, but the real problem is, you do not press up to go indoors in this game. You press the B button to do that. So even if you were actively looking for these hidden rooms, you'd probably be pressing the wrong button. It's funny too, because now that this is slowly starting to come back to me, I do actually remember my dad showing me the secret when I was a little kid. How did he know this, you may ask? Well, how else? He had volume 31 of Nintendo Power. But anyway, I was able to head back to that room pretty easily, so thankfully I didn't have to do an entire fresh playthrough this time. Grab the money, head back to the vault, I just mashed B as fast as I could this time, and apparently if you just time your jumps, you barely take any damage. And here it is, the moment of truth, the door is open, and the final boss awaits. I was kind of expecting the music to change, but I guess there's no boss music either. It's pretty freaking easy, it's just two guys moving back and forth and firing simple projectiles. The pattern is really easy to figure out. I think they're supposed to be Tully and Gordon, the villains from the film. I know, because like the whole thing in the movie is that Gordon looks like Uncle Fester, so he goes undercover to infiltrate the mansion and steal their fortune. Uh, which I guess explains why somebody who looks like Fester was chucking stuff at us. It was actually Gordon the whole time. But no, wait a second, plot twist. Uh, spoilers for the 1991 Addams Family film, skip here if you care. But it turns out that it actually was Uncle Fester the whole time. He just had amnesia and was manipulated to think he was somebody named Gordon. So Uncle Fester goes undercover as himself to, I don't know, what I'm getting at is, no, it just actually is Uncle Fester throwing baseballs at you. Anyway, back to the fight. All you gotta do is jump on their heads three times each. A knot in a row, just like the skeleton. Three individual jumps on each guy and you win. Tully's a little trickier than Gordon since he moves up and down, but if you just lure him to the bottom, it's pretty easy to take him out too. We climb the stairs, pull the cord, free Morticia, and there it is. A black screen with uh, text congratulating the player. Oh, you get a little... They're dancing. And there it is. That's, that's what makes it all worth it. Adam's family on NES. I, I finally beat it, and buddy, it feels good. Like, it was difficult, but I overcame it. And there was actually something kind of cool at the end. I, I really was just expecting one of those insulting congratulations screens, right? And I was kind of surprised at how fun it was, too. Like, the gameplay feels very similar to, to Hollow Knight and Mega Man, which are games that I've played so many times that my muscle memory ended up wrapping around this game weirdly well, and I was able to overcome all of these previously impossible obstacles with just a little bit of practice over a handful of playthroughs. Objectively speaking, it's not really that great a game, of course, but I was expecting it to be a lot worse than it was. I mean, yeah, it's got all the staples of crappy and cheap NES game design, you know, death traps to trick beginners, objects you have to react to the moment you enter the room. I don't imagine it's the kind of thing that's gonna be fun for most people, but in a weird, like, I don't know, speedrun mindset sort of thing, I found it really rewarding learning the game and being able to duck around all of its evil tricks. It's also actually pretty good at being an Adams Family game. Even as a kid, I really did think that. Sure, I couldn't get anywhere close to the end of it, but the non-linear nature of this game, it gives you the freedom to explore the Adams Mansion and take a look at all the rooms you'd expect from the show. So even if you can't get like that far in it per se, you're still free to check out so much of this 8-bit interpretation of these familiar environments. And the detail is just fantastic. The cracks in the walls, all the furniture, the curtains you can climb, I love how dark and moody the forest is, and all the family portraits are just rad as hell. I also feel like the choice in hazards and enemies, you know, while it's somewhat contrived, it is an NES game, a lot of it really kind of did feel like stuff you would expect to find here. I mean, a poltergeist flying all the utensils at you, that's just another day in the Adams household. And an entire evil hell world in the oven, it's like, yeah, of course, no, I buy it. So while it is an undeniably cheap cheaply designed and frustrating video game, I think there's a reason why it stuck with me all these years. Not just because I wanted to beat something that I couldn't beat before, but I think I wanted to beat it to begin with simply because I, I really liked what I got to see as a kid, and I, I just wanted to see the rest of it. I wouldn't imagine most people would ever want to bother with this game, but 
If you like tight action side-scrollers and you have solid patience for stuff like this, I could see you having a pretty fun time learning the game and then speeding through once you're good at it. And I guess looking back, I suppose you do have plenty of lives to get through it all with. Across the two continues, that's nine total, and there's even two more you'll find along the way. Though there are those three parts of the game where you can easily plow through multiple lives, and yeah, that is objectively terrible game design. These two jumps should not be more important than every other jump of the game just because you can die instantly if you miss, which is really easy to do with the rough platform collision. I mean, look at that. And that water sequence I could really do without, or at least do with better controls, because the way it checkpoints you, forcing you to make it all the way there, and all the way back through something like this, it's like, no, you're probably gonna waste at least a couple of lives here. But if you know what you're doing and you get a good run going, it's like a half hour game, not even. So, you know, the lack of saves, it's not really a huge deal like it can be in other games. It wouldn't be much a deal at all if it weren't for the difficulty spikes, honestly. But now that I've learned the tricks, I know the movement and I can wiggle around the problems pretty easily. It's something I can easily see myself throwing on, showing a friend and zipping through real quick just for fun. Oh, and uh, for the record, just before I wrap it up, because I know some people are probably being driven mad by it, this door never opens. I wondered what was beyond it my entire life, but turns out it was simply a facade. I checked the game's TCRF page to see if there was maybe an unused area, but I didn't see anything of the sort. Though there were a bunch of unused sprites with a much more chibi look to them, uh, these even appeared in an early Nintendo Power preview for this game. Man, that's cool. God, what a cool little thing, right? Like, I really did not expect to like this game as much as I did. I was preparing for a piece of crap, and I mean, it kind of is. Objectively, it's not a great game, but holy heck, dude, I had one hell of a blast mastering it. Thanks for watching me tackle this thing. I know it was a super random selection for the NES platformer, but uh, I think it was a really good personal choice. Next time, we're going to be talking about something on Super Nintendo. It's also a 2D side-scroller, but it's not really uh, similar at all. We're going to be talking about Plock. I don't know nothing about it, but we're going to see. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Best friends hanging strong, best friends can do no wrong. Watch cartoons on TV, drink that frosty chug of freeze. It was literally just the Weekenders theme. It was just stuck in my head and I put on Rayman music and it's like, well, I guess that's coming out. I don't know. I don't know. I got a Patreon if you give a shit, if you want to support the yeah. channel.